The first thing I think about, should I just commit suicide? So I got down on my knees right there in that barracks room, and I said, Lord, I don't know who you are. I've only heard about you. But if you don't come right here, right now, and meet with me, I'm going to lose it. Stick around for the rest of this amazing story from former Marine Captain, actor, and ISC 2015 keynote speaker, Ken Bevel. We were made to be courageous. We were made to lead the way. We could be the generation that finally breaks the chains. We were made to be courageous. Ken, thanks for joining us today from your office in Georgia. We're just really excited to have you as our keynote speaker for ISE 2015 in San Antonio, Texas. Why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about your background. What were your childhood years like, and why did you decide to join the Marines? Well, during my childhood, uh, was a very happy childhood uh, while I was there in Jacksonville, Florida, is the place where I grew up. Uh, had a great family, uh, loved my mom, loved my dad, my sisters, and, and my brother. And of course, like any other family, we hit some turmoil. Uh, after some years. Uh, my dad got into uh, some things, alcohol, drugs, and different things like that. And, and, and throughout that time, I saw my family take a, a really, really sharp dip uh, downward. I said, man, I'm either going to be dead, in jail, or on drugs. So I, I have to get out of this place. So uh, I joined the Marine Corps at the age of 17. And uh, man, I loved everything about it. I loved the running, fighting, hunting, just everything about the Marine Corps. So it, uh, as a young man, I felt that need for uh, affirmation, and the Marine Corps gave that to me. So Ken, were you able to escape some of those challenges during your time in the Marines, and during those years of service, what happened to you that changed your life forever? Well, Don, you know, uh, I was able to escape the environment, um, but you never really, you know, you see, you hear the old saying of, you can take the city out of the boy, but you can't take the boy out of the city. And that's exactly what happened. Even though I, I changed environments, my mind was still the same. I was still the same person inside. So when I joined the Marine Corps, although it fulfilled my need for affirmation, I also started getting in a lot of trouble um, because I still had the same attitude and mindset of when I lived back in Jacksonville. Uh, so when I started going through all those things, I hit one really terrible point in my life. And man, that just changed my whole life around. So uh, God really began to do it. That's when I saw God really begin to do a work in my life after that particular incident. Ken, you were firefighter Michael Simmons in the 2008 film Fireproof, and then police officer Nathan Hayes in 2011's Courageous. How were you able to land these great roles, and how much acting experience did you have when you started? Well, I have to tell you, um, besides being a tree in a preschool play, I have never done any acting at all. Uh, this was totally the Lord giving me everything I needed for these films. In my wildest dreams, I could have never imagined that I would become something, a part of something this big. Uh, as a matter of fact, when my wife and I moved from California to Albany, Georgia, we heard about a church making movies and we really couldn't believe it. And uh, after some time there, um, the church uh, had just finished Flywheel and then Facing the Giants. And we were coming in on the back end of that and they were getting ready to film Fireproof. And during one of the services, one of the uh, pastors, Alex Kendrick, uh, wanted to talk to me and we start talking about it and praying about me auditioning for the role in, in Fireproof. And uh, I cannot tell you that I went in and did a stellar job. The Lord had to walk me through that entire process and just put a lot of great people around me. The person that you see on the screen is none of Ken Bevel. It is the Lord uh, you know, acting through me uh, to send a message of the gospel to people that are watching. Ken, I cannot remember a time when there have been so many Christian films in the theaters and films about biblical events. Why do you think the public is so interested in faith-based films these days, and are these films changing lives? You know, Don, I see faith films exploding everywhere. I mean, every commercial that I see, every Facebook advertising that I see is a Christian film, and I think it's amazing um, the way uh, that media is being used uh, to tell the story about the gospel. And the reason why we're seeing so much of this, is I think God has given us a new platform to share the gospel. And in this method, uh, we are reaching millions and millions of people, not only here in America, but around the world. And I think it's fantastic. So we applaud those other Christian uh, actors and directors who are out there making movies. And matter of fact, we're praying for them and that their reach uh, with the gospel will be tremendous and that young men and women all around the world 
will be able to hear the message of the cross. So, Kian, can you give us a preview of what you're going to be speaking about in your keynote address at INC 2015 in San Antonio on June the 10th? Can you give us maybe a 60-second overview of your keynote address? We're going to be talking about uh, not only using our talents and abilities for the glory of God, but also do we know God? Do we have an intimate relationship with Him? One of the things that I've learned over these past few years, you know, acting in the movie Fireproof and the movie Courageous, depending on our talents and abilities can be a crippling thing if we're a Christian. So it is important not to depend on our, our talents and abilities, but depend on the God who made them, made us and gave those talents and abilities to us. So we're going to share a little bit about that and share a little bit about how do we use our talents and abilities in the places that God has given us. So I, I am totally excited to just be there and to fellowship and to share that message. And not only am I I'm, I'm coming to expecting to share a message, but also expecting to receive a, a blessing from the people that are there at the ISC. Ken, I'm just really looking forward to hearing what you have to say at ISC this summer. I know our conference attendees are going to be blessed by your story of hope and by your words of encouragement. Is there anything else you'd like to say to the attendees as they prepare for the conference this summer? Well, I am so excited about joining uh, the ISC attendees for the conference in June. Uh, man, we're going to have a great time. Uh, I want to be able to not only share during our corporate time together, but after that, I want to get out and I want to meet some people. I want to, I want you to tell me about your uh, experiences with Arena, but not only that, I would love to fellowship with you, hear more about you, about your church, and about the way God is using you and your talents and abilities. So I will be available uh, immediately after the conference, and then also I'm going to be doing a few breakout sessions uh, regarding Arena. So I want you to get involved. And if you haven't signed up yet, you need to get online, sign up for the classes and the breakout sessions so we can share together and have a great time at the IIC conference. Kim Bevel's life is a miracle. There's just no other way to explain the radical change that occurred in his life and the powerful way that God is using him now. Do not miss your chance to hear the amazing Kim Bevel story at ISC 2015 in San Antonio, Texas. For more details, just visit the website that you see there on the screen. Now, before we go, here are some of Kim Bevel's most memorable movie moments. One, two, three! Oh Again! One, two, three! I'm not worried about the car. Oh, oh.